Today's topic is about the proper use of humor. And I will read from Living Wisely, Living Well, which is Swami's, it's really like a scripture for daily living. And this is today, May 27th. It says, don't joke too much, lest you trivial, <coughs> excuse me, lest you trivialize your relationships. Controlled merriment helps to relieve, release tension, but unrestrained jocularity keeps the mind light and is a hindrance to deep thoughts. So, let's talk a little bit about the proper use of humor, because humor is certainly an important part. Amusement, laughing is an important part of life. Master said that we should read something humorous every day. And Swami loved a good joke. Master loved jokes. Sometimes uh, Swamiji said that Master would be telling a joke and he would be laughing so hard while he was telling it that the others could barely understand because he had a Bengali accent. And in America, some people had trouble following that. Um, others, Master would be telling a joke and laughing, and people couldn't even follow what the joke was. But they, Master's joy was contagious. And really, humor is an aspect of joy. The reason that we like jokes, the reason that we like humor, is because it is a little short-lived joy and it gives us a spurt of upward moving energy from the heart. Now, there are different kinds of humor, and Swami often talked about the humorist P.G. Woodhouse. He loved to read his stories. He had very funny stories. But what Swami liked about him is that he said it's as if he had a God's eye view of humanity. And so he would have these ridiculous plots, but they were always kindly in some way. And so it was as if he was laughing with the characters or with the absurdity of the scene, but he wasn't putting down anyone. And that was very important to Swamiji. He did not like sarcastic humor, where the reason for the humor was in order to put somebody down. And behind that, you can see the psychological mechanism at work is that you put somebody down so that you can feel bigger. And as Sri Yukteswar said, don't try to be taller by cutting off the heads of your enemies. And sarcastic humor is like that. It's an attempt to cut off the heads of your enemies. And so, Swami didn't like sarcastic humor, but he loved humor. He, uh, Devi and I, we would visit him. Uh, when he was in residence at Ananda Village, we would generally visit him every day. We would uh, go down and have tea with him around 4 or 4.30, and especially in his later years, he would have tea at that time. And then he would take a little walk around his garden, take some exercise. And so we would often go down and we would save up a good joke if we had heard one because he loved it. He always had a little twinkle in his eye when we arrived, wondering whether we had a good joke for him or not. And it was just a very sweet way of, I don't know, of, of producing an intimacy between between us all and so it was it was very sweet humor can be very very sweet but it can also be cutting and sarcastic and so avoid that kind of humor i know that when i was young you know in my teenage years teenagers are often a little bit insecure and i had a quick mind in terms of being able to produce puns. Um, a pun is a wordplay. And so I would be able to produce a pun very quickly and very easily. And so I was constantly doing these puns. 
But as I grew out of my insecurity, I realized that what I was doing was I wasn't really listening or tuning in to what a person was saying or what they were trying to express because I was simply looking for an opportunity to show my cleverness. And so by and large, I have quit uh, punning altogether, although every once in a while I can't resist the temptation if a really uh, fun little wordplay comes into my mind. But the point being is what Swamiji said is that if you keep too much humor going, it keeps you light-minded and it keeps you uh, from experiencing the deeper flows. And very often, as I was saying about the punning, it keeps you from really tuning in to the other people or the situation. Uh, Master used to do jokes during his talks, and Davy and I often do, and Swamiji did. But they always had a purpose. Master would do a joke so that people would relax, and then in that relaxed moment, he could more easily slip in the point of philosophy that he was uh, trying to say in the first place. And so there are many, many proper uses of humor. But let's talk a little bit about a deeper aspect of it, because humor is really an expression of joy. And what we're after is joy, and yet we don't have often the depth of stillness. See, joy is experienced in stillness. Joy isn't a response to anything in the world. You know, the, let me talk about stillness and response for a little bit. Generally speaking, we seek happiness. We don't seek joy. And happiness is a conditioned response to, or a, a reaction to something that happens that's outside of ourselves. So if we get a new car, we're happy. If we even uh, have a little bite of something that's very tasty, we're happy for just a short period of time. But happiness is a reaction to things. But happiness is a lower level of joy. And so happiness in the reactive mode, people are constantly seeking. In fact, happiness is the motivating factor for humanity. Master said that every action is motivated by trying to be happy or trying to avoid pain. So we're constantly trying to find or manipulate the environment around us in order to act in accordance with what we have, by our own habits, have predetermined will make us happy. And when we get a little positive feedback like that, there's a spurt of happiness and it lasts either for a longer period of time or a shorter period of time, but it never lasts very long. And so we're constantly trying to then uh, seek a new source of happiness. And that's what keeps us restless. It keeps us outward. And joking or humor is that same kind of thing. It gives us a little uh, spurt of happiness. Jokes basically are dependent upon you have an expectation, and that expectation, when you come to it, there's a surprise at the end. And that surprise is something that kind of tickles the imagination. I'll tell you a joke to uh, illustrate this. This we heard in India in our last trip there. But a mother comes into a room and her son is sleeping, and she says, get up, get up, it's late. And the son sleepily says, I don't want to get up. She says, get up, get up, you have to go to school. He says, I don't want to go to school. There are two reasons I don't want to go to school. All the teachers hate me, and all the children hate me. And, she, and the mother says, get up, get up, you still have to go to school. There are two reasons you have to go to school. Now, 
here's where the surprise comes in because obviously we're expecting one thing but a joke changes that so the mother says get up get up there are two reasons why you have to go to school one you're 51 years old and two you're the principal and so that's surprise because you're expecting that the mother is talking to a little child who is one of the students but and he says all the children hate me all the teachers hate me and so you've been set up to follow along that trend and then all of a sudden it's the principal of the school and that's humorous probably if I had told the joke properly you would have laughed maybe you did when we've told it uh, in other settings everybody laughs when they hear that joke because it's a it's a fun twist on things and it isn't particularly um, putting down anyone it's just fun but so the point here being is that that surprise is what humor is based on is that you're expecting one thing and you get a different thing and so that gives you a little spurt because you appreciate the humor the uh, creativity whatever it is it gives you a little spurt of happiness but if you're constantly seeking a reactive spurt of happiness you stay away from the stillness that will allow you to experience true joy. Now joy is not a reactive process. See joy is part of our very nature. So we are innately joyful. God is joyful. God is Satchitananda. Consciousness, um, existence, consciousness, and bliss. And so our very nature is bliss. And as long as we are pushing ourselves outside of our own true self, then we won't experience joy. And so we have to have the stillness that we get primarily through meditation, but also the stillness of consciousness. And when we're still, we can begin to experience things that we can't experience when we're restless. For instance, I can hear OM even as I'm speaking because I've tuned into it and that but it's there all the time whether we're tuned in or not OM is just a potential of the universe and so tuning back into OM immediately brings us into the stillness brings because it is the conscious aspect that creates the universe and so we get into that deeper mode Stilling our minds, stilling our hearts. The stilling our hearts means the expectation, the reactive process, desires, wants, needs, all of that. When that begins to become still, then we get in touch with our own innate nature. And part of that nature is bliss, is joy, because that's what we're made of. And so too much humor keeps the mind light. Obviously, we have to go through life. There are so many things that happen every day. and So it's good to keep things somewhat uplifted and light, but not all the time. But humor also has a very positive, um, how to put it, it has a very positive effect of turning the energy of the heart in an upward direction. There was a woman who was part of Ananda, and she was always getting in moods, and she was always getting in kind of fixes. She had a very romantic nature, and she was always getting into a relationship, often with a, uh, inappropriately, and then it would end, and she would be so downcast, and she was always on a roller coaster of life and had, had these moody elements in her life. And Swami, she would, especially during times when she was downcast, she would come to Swamiji and ask what, what she should do. And Swamiji commented one time that during those down periods, it was her sense of humor that saved her because she had a natural sense of humor a kind of an 
uh, ability to laugh at life, ability to laugh at our sand, self. And so instead of going deeper and deeper into depression, she would kind of laugh at the absurdity of the repetitive pattern that she got in. And that uh, sense of humor really saved her. But try to find not only a sense of humor, but try even more to find your own sense of joy. And if you act from your center of joy, then whatever humor you have will be positive and will be kindly. Swamiji wrote one time, he had a dream, uh, and in the morning he wrote after that uh, a little statement about the dream. In the dream he saw all kinds of people, from the worst to the best, but they were all seeking happiness. And he had such a sense of love and, and compassion and friendship for all of them. And in the morning when he woke up, he wrote, The more bliss I feel, the more I see that everyone is utterly lovable. And so as you get into your own bliss, then humor is a part of life. Tragedy is a part of life. But everyone becomes lovable. Joy to you. Namaste. We want to greet all of our dear friends in India who are joining us now and to uh, let you know, you may already, that we'll be returning to India in mid-September, this coming uh, September, and we're looking forward to it. Many of our dear Indian friends joined us on the weekend of May uh, 15th through 17th for the dedication of Swami Kriyananda's Moksha Mandir. And it was really a wonderful experience. If you haven't had a chance to watch uh, some of the re uh, live streaming uh, events, or I noticed on Ananda India Online website that they're all posted, do watch them. They were some very, very inspiring moments and uh, talks that were given. So uh, we encourage you to watch those. Now, Sri Teshwar, who was our guru's guru, was a man, uh, master gave him the title of a Jnana avatar, an incarnation of Jnana, of discrimination. And he was very <clears throat> impersonal, very, uh, didn't show a lot of devotion, although anyone who is an avatar is filled with the love of God. But he led more by uh, spiritual mathematics, one might say. But one of the things that he taught his disciples was learn to behave. And so our behavior in the world is very important for our spiritual life. We can't grow spiritually if we think, well, I, I'll meditate for long hours and do my Kriya practices, but then in my daily life I'll just act however I want. If I want to be rude, if I want to be careless, if I want to be insulting, it doesn't matter. It does matter because uh, as another great disciple of Master, Yanamata said, your religion is tested in the cold light of day. And so we need to align our behavior in our daily life with spiritual principles and not think that our, the time we spent in our puja room, our meditation room, is different from the rest of the time that we're acting in the world. If we're just self-involved, if we're withdrawn and just being dismissive to other people, that doesn't please God, because God is in those other people as well. And that's, Christ said it so beautifully in the Bible. He said, what you do to the least of these little ones you do unto me. So how we treat other people in the world, if we just don't pay attention, if we're always concentrated on our own projects, then that's not pleasing to God. But Swamiji said, in using this concept, learn to behave, that Master was the most perfectly balanced individual he ever met. And Swami was a man of great refinement, great inner uh, dignity. 
And he saw that in Master. And he said the qualities when we're saying learn to behave, Master had this great innate dignity, not stuffy, not like you see some aristocratic people that look down their noses at other people. I don't mean that at all, but an innate dignity that he was poised and centered within himself. And all of his actions, all of his words uh, were an extension of that dignity within himself. He also was very calm. Once he was late for a lecture and he was hurrying to go and someone said, one of his disciples said, don't be nervous, Master. The Master stopped, always, always ready to give a disciple a uh, teaching. And he said, you can run calmly or you can run nervously, but not to run when you're late is to be lazy. So there was that innate calmness in everything he did, dignity, calmness, poise. There was also deep respect for everyone. When you read the stories how one man, uh, he was in a hotel, Master was entering a hotel lobby, and a man who was inebriated came up to him, and even in his drunk state, he recognized that this was there was a great spiritual power, and he put his arm around the man, and he covered his arm around Master, and he said, how are you doing, Jesus Christ? And Master didn't brush him off. He and one of the disciples made a little demeaning remark about this man, and Master said, don't. Don't, don't joke at his expense. And so respect for everyone, and in deep compassion for everyone, and yet underlying it all was this incredible sense of joy. And that joy permeated everything he did, whether uh, he was concentrating on writing. He was a man of great willpower as well, great ab ability to manifest what he set his mind to do. But in all of that, the dignity, the poise, the calmness, the concentration, respect, compassion, underneath all of it was the state of bliss or, or joy. And that's reflected in humor, too. And as Jyotish was saying, Master loved to laugh. And Swami said sometimes he was laughing so hard, the tears were running down his cheeks, and you, you just were, you did, couldn't even understand what he was saying, but his joy was on such a deep soul level that it was contagious, and it uplifted your consciousness. And that's a distinction that I want to make now between jocularity that Swami speaks about and joy because jocularity can keep our mind on the surface and it can keep us uh, it can be a, take us out of our self our, our higher self whereas joy when we are in joy we are residing in our higher self so yes we can laugh we can enjoy a beautiful moment but do it from your center and uh, when you think of uh, people, uh, Jyotish mentioned P.G. Woodhouse. The reason I believe Swami enjoyed those stories so much, and he would read them to us. There are many wonderful recordings, audio recordings, and, and video too, I believe, of him reading the stories. And he would laugh so hard when you listen to them now. Again, just listening to Swami laugh is such a delight. But there was always a sense of self-control in the stories. That's, I think, why Swami liked them. There was a poise. There was a reflective, watchful spirit. And this is that, in that way, humor can be an aspect of joy, of the divine state of joy. But if it's just always keeping us, our mind moving, as Jatish was saying, or laughter, sarcasm at other people's expense, then that that's diminishing to our consciousness. Uh, in Swamiji's book, The New Path, his autobiography, he tells the story of a young disciple who was always laughing and joking and keeping everyone kind of uh, light-minded light in not the best of ways. And Master chided him, corrected him for that, and he said, you shouldn't be so light-minded. It keeps you from being resting in the stillness of yourself. And the boy, this was a very uh, 
important dialogue between the disciple and master that Swami often quoted. The boy said, well, I want to change, master, but how can I do so without your blessings to be not so light-minded and joking? And master replied, my blessings are there already. God's blessings are there. It's your blessings that are lacking. So when we want to learn to behave in all areas, then we need to remember that God is on our side. He's encouraging us to improve. He's, he's helping us, but we have to want to change. And so it's important in your life to learn to behave. Enjoy life's beautiful moments. Enjoy laughter together. But always in the back of your mind, have that watchful state. Swami said, even in when Master was laughing or uh, joking and filled with outward merriment, he said, if you would look into his eyes, there was absolute stillness. And so that's the important thing to remember in everything we do. Let the stillness of God's presence be always the gauge that you measure your consciousness by. It's fine to have a, a light conversation. It's fine to talk about news or things of the world, but always try to do it from a point of inner centeredness. And this was what we saw too, how Master trained Swamiji. When Swami came in, uh, he felt he had been a Master's son in a number of lifetimes and that he had been, as Master's son, Master had been a king in many lifetimes, and Swami was his heir. And so there was an innate nobility and dignity in him. But in that, it's so important to convey the naturalness, the free, the joy in every little thing, um, and the ability to laugh at your own mistakes. Swami said as a young man once he was playing tennis, and he wasn't very good at it, and he tried to make a hit the ball, but he had the racket at the wrong angle, and he swung it. He, when he swung it back, it hit him in the nose, and it actually broke his nose. And he said he laid on the ground, even though his nose was bleeding, and he said he laughed so hard at the absurdity of it. So to be able to laugh at life's absurdities is a great blessing because their life is filled with them. Just all the little things that go wrong, the cars that won't start just when you need them to start, the computer that won't boot up when you have to respond, all the things that go on. And we can either tear our hair out and say, I, I'm done with this, or we can laugh and say, this world is just God's play. And when we see it as a divine Leela, then then that's, that's all it is. It's God's play. It's his show. And as Master said, it was created for our entertainment and education. So let's do be entertained and educated by this life around us. But let's play our part in this entertainment as a child of God with dignity, with joy, with respect, compassion, and inner freedom. If we can do this, then We've come very far in learning the lesson that we came into this life to learn, that our souls are free, that they came from God, just as that chant we started off with, from joy we came, in joy we live, in sacred joy we melt again. Joy to